Welcome back to our channel Math Zone African Motives. In today's lesson, we'll explore water resources, one of the most important topics in geography and environmental science. We'll look at where our water comes from, how it moves around the earth, how South Africa manages its water, and the challenges that come with it. Let's dive right in! Chapter 1. Water in the World 1. 1. The different forms of water water exists in three main forms. Solid, like ice, liquid. Like the water we drink, gas, like steam. When water heats up, it changes from a liquid to a gas through boiling. When it cools down, steam becomes liquid again through condensation. And when we freeze liquid water, it becomes solid ice. This process of changing from one form to another is a key part of how water moves around our planet. 1.2. The Water Cycle the water cycle, also called the hydrologic cycle, describes how water travels continuously between the Earth's surface and the atmosphere. Here's how it works. Evaporation. The sun heats up water from oceans, lakes, and rivers, turning it into water vapor. Condensation. The vapor rises, cools, and forms clouds. Precipitation. Water falls back to Earth as rain, snow, or hail. Runoff and infiltration. Water flows in rivers and streams or soaks into the ground, becoming groundwater. Transpiration. Plants release water vapor into the air. This continuous journey keeps Earth's water in motion, essential for all living things. Chapter 2. Water Management in South Africa 2. 1. South Africa's Water Use. Did you know that most of South Africa's water is used for agriculture? Here's the breakdown. Agriculture. 62% domestic. Household use. 27% industry, 3% mining, 3% forestry, 3% energy, 2%. This shows just how important water is for farming, but it also means careful management is vital to make sure there's enough for everyone. 2.2 factors influencing the availability of water in South Africa. Several factors affect how much water South Africa has available. Let's look at the main ones. Climate change causes unpredictable rainfall and extreme weather. Rainfall distribution. Some regions receive lots of rain while others are dry. Droughts. Extended dry periods reduce water supply. Mining pollutes and uses large quantities of water. Agricultural pollution. Chemicals and fertilizers can contaminate rivers. Increase in industries. More factories mean more water demand. Urbanization. Growing cities need more water infrastructure. Population growth. More people means higher water consumption. All these factors together make managing water a big challenge for South Africa. 2.3 Free Basic Water. To make sure every citizen has access to water, South Africa introduced the Free Basic Water Policy. This policy guarantees 25 liters of clean water per person per day. It also states that every home should be within 200 meters of a tap that provides safe drinking water. However, providing free water is not easy. It's expensive and time-consuming, especially in rural areas. Challenges of providing free basic water. Let's look at some of the challenges faced in different areas. In rural areas, many places have a history of poor service delivery. Infrastructure such as pipes and taps must be installed. Long distances make water delivery difficult. It's costly and time-consuming to reach scattered communities. In urban areas, there are many informal settlements. Old infrastructure often breaks down. Maintenance costs are high. There's a shortage of skilled engineers. Low payments for services reduce funding. Rapid urban population growth increases pressure on supply. Providing water for all South Africans remains one of the country's biggest priorities. 2.4 Interbasin Transfers of Water Because some regions have more water than others, South Africa uses interbasin transfers, systems that move water from wet areas to dry areas. Some examples include Tugela Val Project, transfers water from the Tugela River to the Sterkfontein Dam. Berg River Scheme, moves water between the Thewaterskloof and Berg Rivers. Orange River Project, transfers water through tunnels to support irrigation and generate hydroelectricity. Lesotho Highlands Project supplies water from Lesotho to Gauteng. These projects help ensure that water reaches the areas where it's needed most. 
2.5 advantages and disadvantages of dams dams play a crucial role in water management. Let's look at their pros and cons. Advantages. Provide water all year for farms, industries, and settlements. Control river flow and help reduce flooding. Store water for transfer between river basins. Generate hydroelectric power. Create lakes for recreation. Disadvantages. Cover large areas of farmland. Very expensive to build and maintain. Can fill up with silt, reducing storage capacity. High evaporation causes major water loss. Can destroy or damage ecosystems. Some dams can actually increase flooding risks. 2.6 uses of dams dams are used for many purposes, including supplying drinking water, irrigation for crops, generating electricity, recreation, and flood control. They are essential for supporting both people and the economy, but must be managed carefully to protect our environment. 2.7 application on a topographic map now. Let's look at how water use can be shown on a topographic map using the Volvle Dam as an example. This dam is used for three main purposes. Irrigation supplying water to farms through canals and furrows. Drinking water. The water is purified and treated before being sent to homes. Recreation. The dam is used for boating, fishing, hotels, and caravan parks in nearby areas. You can see these features clearly marked around the dam on the map. It's a perfect example of how one water source can serve multiple uses. 2.8, how can we use water sustainably? Water is precious, and it's everyone's responsibility to use it wisely. Here are some sustainable ways we can manage water as individuals. Save water in households. Turn off taps while brushing. Use less water when washing. Use best irrigation practices. Water crops early in the morning or late afternoon to prevent evaporation. Fix leaking pipes. Even a small leak wastes hundreds of liters. Collect rainwater. Use tanks or containers to store rain for later use. Plant water-wise indigenous plants. They need less water and survive droughts better. Recycle water. Reuse gray water from washing for gardening. By doing small things every day, we can make a big difference in conserving this vital resource. Chapter 3, Floods 3.1, What is a Flood? A flood happens when a river has more water than its channel can hold. The excess water overflows its banks and spreads onto the land around it. Floods can cause severe damage to homes, roads, crops, and even lead to loss of life. In April 2022, for example, flooding in KwaZulu-Natal killed more than 300 people, showing how destructive floods can be. 3.2 causes of floods floods can be caused by both natural, physical, and human factors. Physical causes, steep gradients, water flows too quickly down slopes. High rainfall, heavy rain over a short time leads to overflow. Snow melting adds large volumes of water to rivers. Tropical cyclones or hurricanes bring intense rain and strong winds. Tsunamis, massive waves flooding coastal areas. Human causes deforestation. Trees absorb water. Without them, runoff increases. Poor water management. Blocked drains or dams breaking can worsen floods. Building houses on floodplains leaves homes in high-risk areas. Urban development. Cities with concrete surfaces prevent water absorption. Population pressure. More people means more construction in unsafe areas. These combined factors make flooding one of the most common and dangerous natural disasters. 3.3. How can floods be managed? Flood management strategies vary depending on the area, urban, rural, or informal settlements. In urban areas, avoid building in flood lines or near rivers and coastlines. Build enough stormwater drains to carry rainwater away. Keep green belts and wetlands in cities. They absorb extra water. Maintain a good early warning system to alert people in time. In rural areas, do not farm too close to riverbanks. Avoid overgrazing, which removes vegetation and causes erosion. Practice contour plowing, plowing along the land's shape to slow water flow. Remove alien vegetation from riverbanks. Build flood prevention dams to control river flow. In informal settlements, avoid building too close to rivers. Raise floor levels above ground to prevent water damage. Always be prepared during the rainy season by securing belongings and knowing evacuation routes. 
These actions, combined with community awareness, help reduce flood damage and save lives. We've now come to the end of our lesson on water resources, and we've learned just how vital water is for life on Earth. Let's quickly summarize what we covered. Water exists in three forms, solid, liquid, and gas, and it moves around the planet through the water cycle, constantly renewing itself. In South Africa, most of our water is used for agriculture, followed by domestic and industrial use. However, the availability of water is affected by many factors, from climate change and droughts to pollution and population growth. The government manages water through policies like the Free Basic Water Policy, interbasin transfers, and dams that help store and distribute water. Dams are used for drinking water, irrigation, electricity, recreation, and flood control, though they also have environmental downsides. We also learned that floods are natural events that occur when rivers overflow, caused by both physical and human factors. Floods can be managed through careful planning, especially by avoiding risky building areas, improving drainage, and protecting natural vegetation. Finally, every one of us can help by using water sustainably, saving water, fixing leaks, collecting rainwater, and planting indigenous species. Water is life. Without it, there can be no people, no plants, and no progress. Let's all do our part to protect and manage our water wisely, so that future generations can also enjoy this most precious resource.